thanks for requesting me. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. Let's see. What were we doing? Ah, yes, communism. Hello. Come on, Harry, you can do it. Harry? The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. Oh, this is Cindy the Skull. She's like the person who's like in that gang. And she's also a potential communist. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. I mean, if you're offering. This is the Cindy Mr. Piss and Fuck said had the armored gloves. Play cool now. I feel like she's gonna get pissed if we call her little lady. Whatever, we just wanna know your name, little lady. No need to get defensive. And here I was trying to be polite. Just can't win with you pigs. Despite the sash, she puts the brush aside. A brush? An artist? The red splatter is urban expressionism. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint, it's heavy fuel oil. Do you know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch, pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. Oh shit. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. What were you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. She studies the wall, suddenly pensive. So you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff. Like pigs go home, and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here, though. Just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true. And total. I have an opinion on this. Wanna hear it? Yeah. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me, now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She means the opposite. You've lessened her desire to deface the building. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil, intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. He says, studying the contents of Cindy's bucket. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself back in Jamrock. She really did it. She's proud of it too. Fumes are bad for you, okay? Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little picky carriage. Is that your bed in the coal room? Is that bed in the coal room yours? Ooh. Not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. It's not the nicest place, but I guess it'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Okay, girl. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. The inspiration will come to her once hell is set loose on the streets. It's too calm right now. Really? You're a miner, Harry? Yes. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me. But somehow, it never happens. Don't you have a real home? Does anyone in a city like this? She replies wistfully, looking around. If there's pain about any particular home she's lost, she's buried it deep, fortified herself against it. Cool, I have other questions. Shoot, Piggy. It's Pis what you do, isn't it? 
piss slur and fuck the world send their best. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls, but, but their hearts are in the right place. Got it. Enough of that, then. Thank you for passing on the message. Now run along, piggy. Do you have any idea what happened to the hangman's armor? What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? Come on, Cindy. Just help me out here. Oh, all right, piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military-grade handwear. Look cute as hell. Could that girl have been Little Lily? It's not a bad place to start. I know a little girl in the village, Little Lily. Could have been her. Small kid with giant white armored hands. If you've seen one of them, you've seen them all. Attempt to establish contact. Hey sister, let's talk politics for a minute. And what do you know about politics? My nose told me that you're also a communist. We should join up forces. Well, well. Sounds like quite the snout you've got there. Your olfactory department wants you to know that it accepts no responsibility for wherever this line of interrogation Oh, well that's you. too damn bad. Sure. I know someone who'd love to talk that ideological stuff. You're looking for Stiban. Who's Stiban? A right communist who runs a mega cool and very secret meeting. Does this Stiban happen to go around in a white jacket? He might. Will you help me find him? No. The lieutenant lets slip a sigh that seems to suggest this turn was utterly predictable. I guess I should just give up then. Nothing ever works out for me. Oh god. If he isn't the saddest pig in the world. He really is. Oh, fine. I'll help. But first, I want something from you. What's that? A wicked grin extends across her face. A laughing scalp. Death hilarious. This is gonna be bad. Oink for me, piggy. Just once. Come on, this is no way to treat your revolutionary brother. Wrong! This is exactly how I treat my little brother. Uh, reluctantly. Oink oink. There. That wasn't so bad, was it? It's not the worst indignity you've suffered the last several days, but it is up there. <sighs> the lieutenant, needless to say, is not impressed. Sorry, Kim. Sounds like you're really serious about meeting Stepan. It's touching. Sort of. Stepan's group meets only at night in an old room in these apartments here. It just so happens you're in luck. Their weekly meeting is tonight. Poke your snout around sometime after 10 p.m. and you might just find them. That's very helpful, thank you, Cindy. Hold on, you didn't think it would be that easy, did you? See, Stepan's a bit on the paranoid side. He's got all these mega secret passphrases to keep out infiltrators and the like. You can't join the meeting without one. <clears throat> Lieutenant clears his throat. Not to interfere in your personal errand, but I wonder whether it might have something to do with that phrase Maniana mentioned overhearing. Oh, right. Good thinking, Kim. The Lieutenant nods. Guess this is what happens when two pigs put their heads together. She seems slightly disappointed. That's enough. Off with you then. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, Ungulate. You've got eyes on you. All right, Jesus. Why does art inspire you so much? It does, yes, but what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. 
Would I fit into the art world? I mean... Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have the exact features of a savage art critic. With that beard and those clothes. Disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture too. I guess I have been feeling critical lately. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Okay, if 50% art critic is what's needed to free me from rote repetition, so be it. Exactly. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals of the street, you must also apprehend criminals of the printing press and the gallery, the trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. I'm an art cop now. Right. Is it the store? Pal. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the village and see what Lily has to say. Actually, first, since we're already over here, let's go talk to uh, the blonde lady and see if she knows where Ruby is. Because the boys did not. Gentlemen. Hey girl, I better save. Do you know where Ruby is? I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions pertaining to a murder investigation. those lies you called she repeats then trails off it's unclear what she intended to say yes we demand she be punished for deceiving us we demand her anxiety we demand her fear mm. okay so she doesn't she slowly, know slowly slowly lights another cigarette I'm not interested in arresting her, so I'm not going to go down that line of reasoning. That's that bottle that you have the option of licking. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take a drink. Okay. 
Well, I guess we'll go see Lily. child. Hello, mister. I heard there was a girl here who has armored gloves. Is that you? Oh, I had gloves. Very big ones. Heavy, too. Where did you get these gloves? Found them when Lemmy and I were playing hide and seek. In an empty house. Where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. And where are the gloves now? I hid them. The twins were gonna take them. They're stupid. She lifts her stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye, as though searching for confirmation. We are going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Oh. She doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sandcastle. Behind our house. Under the sand. You can break the castle. It's not very good. Do you know anyone named Ruby? No. Luby. R. Ruby. Suddenly the girl gets all serious and leans in as if she's going to tell you a secret. My mom tells me I'm a big girl. But she doesn't know that I can't say Earl. Or like, sometimes I can. But then, oh. Er. Uller. Kids. Lieutenant shakes his head. Goodbye. Bye. Is that the phasmid? It looks like the phasmid leaning against the wall. Sneak up to the phasmid. It's not the phasmid. It's not even organic. It's a fire iron. How disappointing. I can't believe it. Right? You'll have better luck next time, though. The Phasmid. Finding it is your destiny. Give the dream of discovering the Insulindian Phasmid a rest for now. We're gonna find that fucking bug. Okay, Sandcastle. Weather has not been kind to Lily's little Sandcastle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. Reach into the catacombs and pull out the shiny object. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed, collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Hooray! Congratulations. That's the gauntlets down then. We're doing good on the armor collection front. Okay. And then I was thinking there was a skill check um, that we could do. We passed it once, but then it said that we can do it again. So I was thinking we could try to do it again, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Is it here? Yeah, it's here. Okay. And we might save Scummit because that's just the kind of girl that I am. The once bright mural towers above you, saying, Feld Electrical R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Suddenly, there's a sigh carried on the molecules around you, moving, flowing from high pressure to low pressure, like that of a woman emptying her lungs. 
She wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you in her breath, flowing through it. Where does it go? In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs, and then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. What is happening? She's down there. I think... Say, I think she's down there, below this building. Okay. Why? The wind told me. So, how do we get in there? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. There's a ladder next to the sign. Perhaps we can climb it and enter through the roof? Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. Okay. I'm going without you, Kim. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Some of the rungs are missing. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Assess the situation. The distances between the remaining rungs are rather wide. You'd have to use the mounting brackets. However, they seem corroded and the peeling rust is razor sharp. In addition, the first rung is going to be tough to reach. It's what? Three meters above the ground? And you're 180? Uh, 190. I'm a giant. Okay, but still. The roof is collapsing and the wind gets pretty brutal up there. Dismounting from the ladder is going to be hard. Perhaps if you were to not climb the ladder. Instead, what if you were to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? Okay. Astral projection. Be open-minded about this. What if I don't climb? What if I just teleport? Teleportation is not a thing. Come on, Kim, where's your adventurous spirit? This really has nothing to do with adventure. We are dealing with basic physics here. It won't hurt to try. Oh yes, it could hurt. A lot. <laughs> Kim is so tired, dude. He is restraining himself from using a parental tone with you right now. You're not ready to do this yet. First I have to save. Hydrate? Okay, hi Lolly. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Okay. We can do this. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Come on, come on, come on, come on. On second thought, maybe teleportation isn't a thing. Why? Because you're just standing there squeezing your buttocks and nothing is happening. <laughs> Kim, it isn't happening. I'm not teleporting. You're not. Please, don't try to climb the building. We'll get in another way. <laughs> God. This one's 50-50, so... I should only have to save scum a couple times. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. All you All need right. to do is close your eyes and concentrate. Darkness enfolds you. You can feel the distance between the bench and the first rung of the ladder. All you need to is... Do it. Zoot, zap, pow, crinkle. It's like magic. You feel yourself disappear. Your atoms fading out of existence. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Bam! You find yourself on the roof, having mastered the art of physical displacement. I did it, Kim. I teleported. I just saw you climb the ladder. <laughs> you just climbed it, like a regular person. <laughs> the wind at the top of the building starts howling loudly, blowing away the lieutenant's voice. Faintly, you hear. Never mind. Find a way to let me in when you get inside. Don't go adventuring with a backup, especially if we think the suspect may be hiding here. God. The central support beam has been destroyed by artillery fire. Artillery fire.
The glass covered is covered with grime and dust. You can barely see out. Martinez, 98. Okay, there's more stairs. You should take out your flashlight. Must I? Acquainted office furniture. Last century, maybe? Antiquated. Brought down and forgotten so long ago. Urkel. <laughs> Have fun lurking. <laughs> this overturned table is covered in orange mildew, crawling with something. Old folders in the cart, documents silvery with mold. A series of thick, dusty panes of glass. This isn't just glass. These are old computation components. These are computer components? Yes, filament memories. From the time when wires were cast in glass. Slides with an inlaid nervous system. How'd they do that, and why? The how was a closely guarded secret. Something that was locked in safes and human heads across the river where they were manufactured. As to why, your fingers don't know. Oh boy, we got a suit jacket. Hi, Cam. Two rusty metal plates that slide apart form a crude door. It's been here under the boardwalk for a while. Who's there? What do you mean, who's there? It's me, Kim. Stop being around and help me get the door open. Push the doors open. <laughs> Hi, Kim. The I doors miss you. seem to be on rails, but they've gotten jammed. You grab a side and put some strength into prying it open. With the help of your partner, the two metal panels slide open with a creak. Huh. I hope no one dangerous heard that. How'd you even get there? After you climbed up to the roof, you mean? There's a maintenance entrance under the boardwalk. It's next to a drain pipe, possibly a stone drain. It was easy to miss before. He's quite proud of himself. Could have saved me the effort. <laughs> At least now we have an exit, so let's get going. It's time to investigate these passages. All right, Kim. Oh boy, bunk beds. Stale fabric smell and dust. No one slept here in months, maybe years. These pots and plates are full of dust and spider webs. Revolutionary propaganda on the bunk bed, ancient flyers and brochures. A mustachioed and mutton chopped man, amateurishly depicted, gazes at you with sad eyes. The plaque reads K. Mazov. Who is there K. Mazov? There's a spiderweb oh. in the lower left corner of the portrait. Who is K. Mazov? Well, my amnesiac friend. Mazov is the father of scientific communism. His theories about economic history greatly influenced, some would even say sparked. The anti-centennial revolution. So my comrades were here. If you wish. At any rate, looks like some Mazovians were hiding out here, but left a long time ago. The lieutenant does not seem to share your enthusiasm. What's with all these secret weapon cache caches and secret bunkers? We have found a lot of those lately. I guess what most people think of as history tends to linger in random neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. A long time ago? How long? Half a century. This was probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. He looks around. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio equipment by then, but that's all been looted. Maybe I should move in here. Seems cozy. I won't stand in your way, but only after we are through with this case. <laughs> Could someone have stopped through here recently? You mean like Ruby? No, I think we've stumbled on a piece of history. Brush the dust off the portrait. Years worth of dust is shaken off 
The full head of hair matched by an ample moustache and sideburns look a bit silly. There be something over here, no? <gasps> Footprints! Footprints in the sand. One of the souls appears to more worn than the other. No, 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 okay, no, yep. There's something in the air, an unnatural buzzing. The tunnel collapsed, you'll have to fa find another way around. It's getting louder, the buzzing sound. There it is again, like a swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost smell. Lieutenant, do you feel something? No. What do you mean? A pain, a strange tingling. I don't feel it, but we should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. I saw them too. Footprints with the right soul worn smooth. Looks like our suspect. If she isn't here, we need to plan our next step carefully. What do you mean? Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. Damn. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. I suddenly remembered we were running the serial numbers on the victim's armor. You think we should finish running it now? Maybe you're right. It might not be as useful later. It's a minor point. Don't worry too much about this. There are bigger fish. Do you think whatever happens will affect our cryptozoologists? You mean Morel? I don't see how cryptozoology and the murder investigation are connected. But the situation in the city will get tense for everyone. If it gets that tense, the amateur zoologists might not be able to do their job. How bad do you think things could get? Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. He smiles in the dark. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. We've met Joyce, but we don't know what she knows yet. We should probably find out. Definitely. I think she knows something about the mercenaries. And she won't be around if the situation explodes. Everett knows more than he's told us. Maybe we should continue working for him? You're right. However corrupt he may be, nothing happens in Martinez without him knowing. We might have to dirty our hands, but... In this case, we can't afford to be squeaky clean. What do you think is waiting for us there? I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. I wouldn't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. All right. I want to go back and do all those things because forever I don't have what he needs I don't have what that boat lady Joyce needs the serial numbers I guess we could do that because Everett wants signatures for her. Ooh, I didn't click on that we have to go back The same slit window you saw from the outside. Thank you. Okay, I see. All right, well, let's go check on those serial numbers. That's about all we can do.
Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the so- This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Did you find out more about the owner of the armored boots? Yes. It took some convincing, but I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? The lieutenant leans in to listen. Notebook in hand. Shoot! That suit of armor was issued to an Orani citizen named Elis Tortenaer. That's E-L-L-I-S K-O-R-T-E-N-A-E-S Exact date of birth, unknown. He was signed into the Lelystad County Neonatal Care Unit on 28th of February, 09. Neonatal Care Unit? He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned farm. He spent four months in the Neonatal Unit, survived apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. This is what the ICP knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered the East Bram Military Academy in Vredefort at 17, then served in the Oranese forces till he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did. And that's it. There are no records of his employment in Crenel, or any of its other incarnations. Wait, he was- even entering Ravachon. Wait, he was found in a leaf compactor? It's a garden tool used to press leaves into the cube. It's a detail the hospital has, the only detail in these files. So I thought it would be good for you to know. It is. Thank you, Alice. Any information on his foster parents? None, officer. Sorry. So we ha- will have to connect him to Colonel. Colonel is the armor? Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double check their inventory. Thank you, Alice. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. She sounds pleased. A compliment from Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Not bad. Well, since we have his name and service record now... The name? This is very good. Elise Cortona. He says to himself. Sometimes police work is about human dignity. About giving back names to anonymous victims. I'm glad the inquiry was helpful to your investigation, officer. Did you have any other questions? I'm done with the radio for now. 57, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. All right, well, that's about it. We got some experience points and we got a skill point, so that's good. It's good to have those skill points because, like, sometimes these checks are so fucking hard, dude. <laughs> like, I don't like having to save scum, but, like, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it'd be like that. Man, lately I've been eating, but then like I get super hungry like really fast and it's so annoying. Like, I don't know if I need to eat stuff that has, like, more, like, I don't know, like, sustenance or something to it. But, like, today I ate, like, two waffles. Just, like, frozen waffles. Um, a bunch of fries. And a can of mandarin oranges. And then, like, an hour later I was hungry again. Like, bro. Hate it. I think we are actually gonna wrap up here. Like one, my controller's dying. Two, I'm very tired. So we'll save all that excitement for next time. Cause it sounds like things are about to go down. <laughs> lurky lurk. Hey Victor, thanks for lurky lurking. Let's see, who should we raid? Okay, we're gonna raid Burgle. Burgle's doing art. He does art on Fridays. Last week he drew me. 
All right. Thanks for joining me again. I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.